This is such a fun matrix problem that if A and B are two by two matrices, anything you like, random two by two matrices, and you take AB minus BA, and you square that, that's always going to be a constant times the identity matrix. So it's going to have the same number on the diagonal and zeros off the diagonal. How cool is that? Of course, you should be aware that AB may not be equal to BA. There are examples of that for two by two matrices. Does not matter. Take that difference, square it, you'll get this. This result is not true for three by three and higher. It's very special to two by two matrices and the trick is just so beautiful. So I'm so excited to share it with you. Don't forget to smash that like button and subscribe if you're really finding this original and fun math content. So let's just dive right into it. So what we're going to do is, first of all, I'll tell you a way of solving this if you know it's true, but it's not a nice way. The way is just to write down A and B as matrices in terms of some variables. So suppose you wrote down A is equal to something like A, B, C, D, and we wrote down that B was equal to something like E, F, G, H. Um, then what we could do is we could take A times B, we could write it in terms of all these variables, then take B times A, write it in terms of all these variables, take the difference, then square that matrix, we get a huge mess, we'll find some things cancel, and somehow it looks like this. But that's such a bad way of proving it and it doesn't really help to understand why this is true or even it's just not elegant. So let's shorten it and that's the beauty of math. It's shortening arguments, finding creative tricks to make things very natural and simple. So what we're going to do is we're going to understand this matrix AB minus BA. It's a very special kind of matrix. And what's special about it? Well, what happens to the trace of the matrix? Okay, so remember that the trace of a matrix, if you take the trace of some two by two matrix, let me write it out as A, B, C, D, it's just the sum of the diagonal entries. Okay, so it could be for a higher three by three n by n matrix. So in this case, for a two by two matrix, it's just A plus D. Now there's a beautiful relation on the trace. If you haven't seen it, you can prove it for n by n matrices. It's very beautiful and a very important linear algebra or matrix statement is that the trace of A times B is always equal to the trace of B times A. So it does not matter what A and B are, you can switch the order of multiplication. There may be different matrices, but their traces are always equal. It's not true that the trace of AB is the trace of A times the trace of B, okay? That's not true, but this statement is true. And because of this statement, because the trace is additive, okay? So what that means is if you add up matrices like AB minus BA, right? If you imagine how the diagonal entries are formed in the matrix difference, it's just adding up the diagonal entries of AB and subtracting off adding up the diagonal entries of BA. So another way of writing that is this is trace of AB minus trace of BA. And because of what I just said, this is going to equal to zero because the trace of AB and the trace of BA are equal. It's a general statement for n by n matrices. Why is this special? Because we're going to get a deep understanding of AB minus BA. Doesn't matter what A and B are. We're just going to be able to say something about that. And what we're going to be able to say, I'm going to write on this side of the board. What we can say is that the trace of AB minus BA is zero, as I just said. So we can write AB minus BA in a very special way. And what is that special way? We can write it as follows. We can write it as A minus A, B, C for some A, B, and C. Okay, why can we do this? Because we know the trace is zero. So the sum of the diagonal entries is zero. So if we think about D, A, and D, that means D is minus A, so we have this form. And now let's square this matrix. And this is gonna be a lot easier, okay? Because we only have three variables, not eight variables, not a huge mess. We can just take A, B, C, minus A, and multiply it with itself, A, B, C, minus A, and look what's gonna happen, okay? This is gonna be mind-blowing. We're gonna get A squared plus B, C, okay? It's matrix multiplication, A squared plus B, C, then A, B, minus B, A, right? A, B minus B, A, then we're going to get C, A minus A, C, so we're going to get C, A minus A, C, and finally, so we're going to get C, B plus A squared, because minus A times minus A is plus A squared, okay, so we're going to get C, B plus A squared, and just look at this, okay, this is just so nice, I'm just going to write it there, so what's so nice about this is A squared plus B, C, A squared plus B, C is the same, so therefore, A, B minus B, A squared, it's just going to equal to the following. It's going to equal to a squared plus bc, 0, 0, a squared plus bc. Hence, it is a scalar multiple of the identity matrix. Another way of stating this exercise, it's very beautiful, I saw it in Herstein's topics in algebra, is that if a and b are linear transformations from a two-dimensional vector space to itself, then a, b minus b, a is always squared 
is always going to be commuting with every other linear transformation. So the matrices that commute with everything are just the diagonal matrices where both entries on the diagonal are the same. The scalar multiples of the identity. So there you have it. How cool is this exercise? And I want you to drop a comment. This is false if you have three by three matrices. It's not always going to be that AB minus BA squared is a scalar multiple of the identity. Can you drop a comment and tell me what you know example there is? And do you have other alternative approaches for solving this? I'd love to hear it. Huge thank you so much to Stefan for Ruby support and Alex and Nathan for gold support on Patreon. Makes a world of difference. And thanks so much to the YouTube channel members, Enehota. Aman, Rob, and Shabid for their ongoing support. It also makes a world of difference. There are exclusive perks on either platform as my way of saying thank you. And it really helps because right now I run everything on the channel on my own. And with these contributions, I can start helping to outsource some of the work to really free up my time because I spend pretty much all of my free time, a lot of my free time on YouTube, honestly. So and I love doing it, but a little bit of support, even, even small amounts really adds up. So thank you so much for your consideration. And I've got two fun videos for you. The first video, you're really gonna love this. It's an intro to abstract algebra. You know, this kind of map, if you wanna learn group theory, but you just wanna intuitively feel for it, check out the video, it's gonna pop up on the screen here. It's a new arithmetic operation. It's actually a group but I'll walk you through everything can be understood. It's known to people from the age of five, but they don't actually know they know it. Okay, so check that out. Okay, it's a very cool arithmetic operation. And don't forget to like and subscribe and hype the video if you want, you know, if you're really loving this channel, just hyping really helps a lot and really helps advertise this video because my goal is to create free infinite accessible math education to help as many people as possible. With your support, you know, watching this far, liking, hyping, everything, it makes a huge difference and I'm super excited to catch you in either of these two videos.